Feature number 10 in Odeon 13 is the two-step sound source calibration. You need this calibration if you want to assess the DE parameter strength uh, according to 3382 part 1 performance spaces or if you want to assess open plan offices according to part 3 of the same standard. So two-step sound source calibration, why would you need such a thing? Let's have a look. So normally we have performed the calibration in a one-step process, which sounds like it's easier than a two-step process, but it isn't. It can be performed in a, in a reverberation chamber or in an echoic room. I'll just cover the reverberation chamber here. So um, the way to do it is you measure in a number of microphone positions, you use a number of source positions, you assume diffuse field, you derive the source power uh, according to the room, volume, reparation time and relative SPL as derived from the measurements. And this is being aver an average. So the problem with this traditional one-step calibration, what is it? Well, the measurement system must be identical with calibration setup, so you must have exactly the same system when you perform your, your measurement as you had when you did your calibration. So that means gain or, uh, of power amplifier must be the same. You must be sure, or you must be sure of the difference. Gain of microphone amplifier must also be unchanged, or you must be sure of the difference. All the settings you can affect uh, the measurement within Windows must remain unchanged. So that includes microphone slider, microphone amplification, loudspeaker slider, etc. And indeed, the sound card or the PC cannot be replaced by another. So you really need to have the exactly the same system when you do your measurements on site as you had during your um, calibration. And that's quite a bit awkward. So why we add the second step? Uh, let's see. What we do is we uh, make a last recording after we made uh, our diffuse field measurements in a number of points, then we make a measurement close to the source in a fixed uh, distance at a fixed orientation. And this measurement we can perform and, and repeat on site just before our measurement. And when we start measuring uh, parameters on site in the real room, and we perform the same uh, measurement in a fixed distance and the distance can be, say, a meter, or it can even be on the source. So the microphone might just be positioned on source, and it seems to work quite nicely too. So just close enough so we can gate away uh, reflections from, uh, from the floor. And having these two measurements to compare against each other from the calibration setup and from the on situ, in situ, uh, uh, recalibration, we can calculate a difference between uh, these two measurements. And the difference between these two will then be an offset uh, which we can uh, correct our, our setup for, which accounts for differences in gain of amplifier, gain of microphone amplifier, and so on and so on. And even you might change the sound card if it's uh, fairly frequency uh, linear. The trick here is that we can gate away, so we can cut away uh, the reflections from our measurements, so it will actually be uh, uh, identical whether um, uh, you are on site having reflections from the floor, uh, or you are in the reparation chamber, or if you are doing an anachoric calibration instead, and you are in an anachoric situation. So uh, we cut away any reflections and only have the direct sound. We don't care that we are in the near field uh, region of the source because this is just an offset. So if it's the same uh, gated response we have uh, in the calibration setup as in the in situ calibration setup, then we don't care if it's uh, near field conditions. It's just an offset we are deriving and we gate appropriately. So now let's do the two-step calibration uh, inside Odeon. So I go to the measurement calibration, select the fuse field, two-step calibration. First we ask to uh, enter the volume of the vibration chamber. 
and then we uh, select the diffuse field measurements, which are uh, measured induced distance from the source, so not in the near field of the source. Odin will now open these selected files and uh, compute average reparation time and average uh, sound pressure level for the octave bands um, in order to do the first part of the calibration. So we're just waiting for the numbers to be crunched. Can you see the different impulse responses that we are loading at 1000 Hz in this case? And we're almost there. And now we are asked to select uh, the near uh, field recording. So this is a recording which is so close to the source that uh, um, we can gate away reflections at high enough frequencies. I select this file which is half a meter away from the source and it could be positioned at the, at the source or in a meter distance or half a meter or so on. We tried different variations and any of them seems to work fairly well. And the point being that we should do our in situ recalibration uh, at the same distance. So now Odian uh, asks us for a name and I uh, typed already reparation chamber, two-step procedure. It doesn't matter so much because Odian will apply an extension to the file name anyway. So this will be our file name, Reparation Chamber Two-Step Procedure. You could give it a date or something so you'll remember which file it is uh, when you um, are going to use it later on in situ. So now we save this uh, calibration file and that's the end of it for as far as comes to uh, the Reparation Chamber uh, Calibration uh, Procedure. So um, that was it. So here you see uh, the gated part of the response. So this will essentially be the same whether um, you perform it in situ or in reverberation chamber or, uh, or even in an echoic room because we cut early enough to chop away uh, reflections from the floor if there is a floor uh, present. So this is essentially very reproducible. The only difference will be that it can have a different uh, amplification depending on what the microphone settings and, uh, uh, and power amplifier and so on, what they are, are at. So let's uh, go to uh, the in situ uh, part of it. So this is when you are on site to measure in the real room. And then you need to do your uh, in situ correction. So let's select the measurement, calibration, in situ correction. And uh, maybe you remember uh, that this was the file indeed uh, we, may, we have just made. You can see the date here if you remember that. Uh, anyway, it has two-step calibration as the extension and I select it. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's it. So now we need to select our measurement which we have just performed, supposedly in situ. And I will go to the ordinary room here and I will find this uh, measurement. And uh, if you're doing it in situ, you probably have it very present which file it is. Now I'm just uh, showing uh, how it's done in one, one row. But uh, you would be in situ and you would select your calibration file and then you'll select this uh, in situ measured file which you have just measured on site. And then it saves it uh, now as one step calibration file because when you apply this uh, two step, second step uh, to uh, your calibration then essentially the two step calibration is turned into a normal Odeon calibration file uh, which has the extension calibration and that's what you can use uh, during your measurements. So this is, uh, let me see, what should I call it, call it? Uh, on site, uh, calibration from two step. So this is the file. And uh, do you want to set it uh, as the active calibration file? I just answer yes. And that means that this file will now be uh, the active one. And uh, if you make measurements from now on, they will be um, calibrated accordingly to, to this setup. 
Um, I just want to show that uh, even if you didn't make your calibration before you make your you know, on-site measurements, you can still rescue it if you have made your one-step, uh, two-step calibration, uh, second-step calibration out there. So the first part I just did. So let's have a look. Uh, we can uh, assign calibration to existing measurements. And indeed, uh, I want to say that this is uh, um, my calibration here. So I have, let me see, on-site calibration. So it says, which one do you want to assign? And I want to assign this one. And maybe I want to assign it to these changed gains. files here. There were four of them. And then we apply the calibration. It says it was a success. We can now open them. And I just want to select these four files again. Change gain, change gain, change gain, change gain. Four files. And then what you'll see is uh, probably some gains which are around 20-something decibel, and that is to say we are really close to the source in this situation. So normally you would not expect so high values like this, but uh, that's what we have now before we are probably closer than a meter to the source. Um, so there we are. So that's what in uh, two-step calibration, the point being that even if your uh, microphone amplifier and power amplifier and, and maybe even sound card doesn't uh, constitute the situation you had in your calibration setup in the vibration chamber, then you are able to, uh, to account for the differences. And that can be quite handy. Uh, indeed, in many cases, you might want to uh, uh, decrease or increase uh, microphone amplification in order to get the best possible signal-to-noise ratio on site. If you're measuring in a small room or you're measuring in a very large room, close to source, very far from source, then uh, it's very useful to be able to change gain settings. And as you have a lot of these settings uh, on your power amplifier, on your microphone amplifier, your sound card, in Windows and so on, being able to just recalibrate it and be sure that everything is okay is, is a very nice thing. And indeed, uh, if you have a power amplifier, you might not even be able to set uh, the pot meter at exactly the same level. There can be slight differences from time to time. Um, and that is uh, compensated by this procedure. So um, that was what I had to say about two-step calibration. It became somewhat of a larger uh, presentation. Um, but uh, I hope you find it useful and I think it will help you to be able to um, create repeatable measurements of uh, parameters such as the G parameter strength, which has been somewhat of a problem because there are so many different settings that need to be uh, exactly the same uh, when you do the calibration as when you do uh, on-site measurements. So thank you for taking your time to watch this small video.